Oh my goodness, this hair is a mess. This is this is tough times, but in these tough times, we need to see the light, and the light is here, and the light is now, and that light is this video. I know, I wish it was something a little more profound than that, but nevertheless, hello, good day to you. My name is Nate. This is Limping Through Models with Nate, and I'm here to start on the build for the Moonshiner's Cabin, right here, Interaction Models. Moonshiner's Cabin. Let's go to the tape. The Moonshiner's Cabin by Interaction Enterprises gets its looks from the stakeout cabin featured in the movie The Untouchables, starring Kevin Costner, Sean Connery, and that Bellagio-owning turncoat Terry Benedict. In the instructions are diagrams of all the pieces and their corresponding part number. Because the diagrams are on a single sheet, I decided to photocopy both sides of the sheet and tape each to the shelving in front of my workbench. With my ever accurate model parts legend before my eyes, I take inventory of all the pieces of the model and determine a plan of action for painting, being sure to mark the front faces of the outside walls. Or maybe this is the back. I don't know. More on that snafu later. Time to throw some color at this model by selecting a couple paints for the roof and foundation and selecting my stains of choice. I decided to take advantage of the selection of hunter line stains I had at my disposal. What well, usually retails for $9 to $11 online, I was able to snag at a train show for $5 a bottle. My idea was to use lighter stain on what would be the inside floors, walls, and rafter beams, and a darker stain for the outside facing decking and walls. Like most other stain types, regardless of the coloring agent, warped wood is like Thanos. It's inevitable. To some degree. Especially with this model. The rafter beams are ridiculously thin, about 1 32nd of an inch thick, no more than 16th at most. With a thickness like that, warping was inevitable, despite staining both sides. Good thing I have all these acrylic paint bottles lying around. Time to paint these wall faces using a sheet of paper as a protective covering for my surface. What madman would be using paper towels at a time like this? I start with painting the front side of the wall face, or what I thought was the front side of the wall face. After confirming, I carry on with the painting. For the batten sheets, I decided to sponge the paint on to make it easier to get between each board. And for good measure, I sponge the wall faces as well to maybe hopefully dull down some of my brush strokes. I then move on to the stone foundation, sponging the paint to get into all the cracks of the stone. Additionally, since I am paranoid about the proper orientation of these wall faces, I sponge the back, I think, of the wall faces too. Continuing with my sponging escapade, I start to sponge some of the detail parts, including the railings for the porch area and steps, the individual pieces of the front and back doors, and the window panes and trim. I had decided to start sponging parts of the additional detail kit. However, as I progressed with building these detail parts, I realized there would need to be a lot of touch-up needed despite my forethought. As with every one of my new projects, out with the old blade, in with a new, fresh number 11 X-Acto blade. Using my new hot knife, I start with cutting out the door parts of the front and back door. One gripe I have about these door parts is the way they stack together does not match with how they're organized on the sprue. Meaning when you layer the parts together, you'll end up with parts which line up with unpainted surfaces, if you only painted one side of the door pieces. This does require me to go back and paint both sides of the door to complete the look. Once all the door pieces are stacked together, they look great, despite the touching up needed on the unfinished surfaces. One thing I cannot find are those pesky door handles. They're so small. The next part of this build is where it gets a little dicey. However, the general technique is still the same despite the mistakes that were made. Again. More on that snafu later. I cut out the wall sections starting with the composite and the matching wooden wall piece. 
I use a sponge to apply the tacky glue to the wood surface and attach the composite to its matching side, being sure the edges line up and are smooth. Now on to the part of the build that caught my eye all those months ago when I saw the structures ad in Model Railroader magazine. I now have the privilege of attaching the newspaper wallpaper to the interior of the wood structure pieces, cutting the straight edges by freehand like an absolute madman. I forego the sponge and use a brush with a subtle wetness to thin out the tacky glue. Once the paper takes hold, I check the edges of the wall and shave off any excess paper that may be present. The instructions instruct me to clip off 1 32nd of the wallpaper from the bottom of the wall, but like a big dummy I interpret that to be 1 16th. Chalk it up to another casualty to the overall snafu to be discussed, you guessed it, later. The exterior battens are the next layer of the wall to go on. I've already prepared the batten with glue and I'm applying the pieces to the wall, making sure the bottoms of the wall and batten windowsill are flush. A neat thing about this batten piece is the left and right border is spaced just right so that you can use those edges to square up the batten on the wall. And here's what we have so far of the exterior and interior portions of the wall. It's at this point of the build that the proper window sill is installed in the window. The piece is laser cut to fit in the window frame so that the curved edge of the sill faces inward. However, I had to do much sanding and filing to get this sill to fit just right. Want to know why? Well, it starts with an S and ends with a NAFU. More on that later, I promise. The window glazing is cut from the laser cut sheet. I keep the paper on the window to minimize the potential for fingerprints when handling. To make applying the window to the frame easier, I keep the frame in the sheet. That way I don't have to piddle around with a tiny frame in my hand. Once it's set, I cut the complete frames out and drop them in the window. The trim of the front batten provides a lip to drop the frame into, so the window does not fall straight through. Once both panes are in place, the interior trim is added and the wall is effectively complete. Or so I thought. More on that now. Okay, so a lot's happened between the time I finished this wall and now. So what I was planning on doing was building this wall out using that as the, the basis for how to generally do all the walls of this kit. And then just propagate that to the other walls and then show you the final product. While I was in the middle of doing that, I got a little confused with the instructions. So you have these pieces that are like straight, smooth pieces of wall that attach to the outward wall. Now the outside wall is wood. And these, uh, these other pieces are kind of like a composite material, very, very thin composite material. And I thought to myself, huh, these are supposed to go on the outside. So I was working this whole wall thing with these composite materials on the outside. In this example, you have the composite material on the outside and the battens are glued on top of that. And then on the back side here, you have the, uh, the wallpaper attached to the wood itself. Well, problem is, the wood is supposed to be outward facing. The, the other piece is supposed to be inward. And it's that composite material that's supposed to be on the inside, and that's what the, the wallpaper attaches to. So, in theory, I did this wall completely wrong. And I'll tell you why I got tripped up. You see, the reason I got messed up is because of these two pieces right here. They're very similar, but they have subtle differences. Um, and one thing that was really confusing is that how they are laid out on the sheets and how the instructions have them 
numbered, okay? So just to give you an idea, let me get this over here. Okay, so you have the wood. These, this is supposed to represent the piece of wood and the outside, uh, the outer panels of all the walls, okay? These are your battens, okay? This is that composite material that goes on top of the wood faces. The parts in question are part five and part six. They differ in that one of the notches for the rafters is directly against the edge of the wall. And for both, it's on opposite sides. So on wall five, it's actually on the right side. Wall six, it's on the left side, okay? However, when you go to the composite material and the sprue for that, 5i, which is supposed to go against 5, matches up just fine, okay? But where it different, differs is 6 is fixated and situated the same way, in the same orientation. So if you're going to paint this the same color, what you need to do is you need to flip part 6i and paint the other side. Because if you don't do that, you'll end up messing up these pieces. And I messed up these pieces pretty bad. And I tried to rectify it. And I made it worse. And it was so bad that I had to buy another kit. And that's what I did. Carefully. I took that kit. I took the pieces. I made sure everything was right. And I finally got them together appropriately. With the wood on the outside wall with the battens, and on the other side with that composite material on the inward wall with the uh, newspaper wallpaper over top. I'm not completely done with these yet. Uh, there's still some touch-up I need to do. I need to put the windows in and um, that will be it for that. And there's also uh, some um, one by eight strip that goes across the top. Uh, that's used for some sort of support, I think, for the uh, the roof. Um, but I will have all of those pieces done by the next episode, in which I will go ahead and put all of the uh, the the structure together, and also maybe show off some things I did in the interim because it took about a week and a half for the kit to actually get here. So there are some other things that I decided I was going to do with the parts that I did have so that I can be prepared and ready to go when uh, the kit comes with the walls and everything like that. So I may show off some of that next time too. Uh, but I got a lot of footage in the can for that, so it shouldn't be like, you know, two weeks between, you know, now and the time that video comes out. It should be ho hopefully within a week if I can get it all um, cobbled together. But in the meantime, like, comment, subscribe, do whatever you have to do to hopefully get back here next week where we're gonna put this thing together and uh, give it some semblance of a uh, structure. So until then, see you next time.